Good morning. Welcome to the Elliott Homestead. We thought today we could take you on a cottage garden tour and show you all the beauty that's to be had right now here in early June on the farm. Before we take you through the gardens, I wanted to let you know that we set our summer workshop dates. There's just 20 spots per workshop and we're gonna deep dive into preserving stuff from the garden, sourdough and einkorn baking over the summer. So you can check out details for those below the video. Now the very best way to do a garden tour is for you to actually walk through the gardens, but we're gonna to try to do the very best we can to take you through and show you what's beautiful right now. This is the newest little spot in my garden. This is my citrus garden. So we're too cold for most citrus. There's a few that'll go down to about zero, but even that's not cold enough for us through the winter. So I keep all my citrus in pots. This way I can keep them in citrus soil and I can kind of manipulate water a little bit closer than when they're in the ground. And of course I can take them inside in the winter time. So uh, a few of these trees are a couple years old. This is a Meyer lemon tree uh, that I've had inside for a couple winters and it's still alive and I'm just so happy to see it. So hopefully all of these will set bloom very soon and uh, we'll have some citrus fruit to come out of it. Even though we're in the gardens today, we spend plenty of time in the kitchen too, and we've stocked our kitchen with Kamikoto knives. Right now, they're running a Father's Day sale where you can get $50 off any purchase using code Elliot Homestead. You can visit kamikoto.com forward slash Elliot Homestead to find the knives that would fit best in your kitchen. These individually inspected, lifetime guaranteed knives made out of Japanese steel will be delivered to you in a beautiful ashwood storage box after having gone through a rigorous 19-step process that takes years to complete. Kamikoto isn't just the sponsor of today's video, they're also the knives that I have used in my kitchen for over six years. These are Japanese steel knives forged by master craftsmen, and the result is shockingly sharp knives that are easy to clean, fit perfectly in your hand, and are made to last your entire lifetime. There's a link right below the video to visit Kamikoto and remember to use the code Elliot Homestead for a one-time $50 discount. So where I'm standing now is in our courtyard. To the right of me is the door to our kitchen that a lot of you know. And then our actual front door is the other door that you see here. When we moved in, this was an old deck that had a broken hot tub on it. And it's really neat to see what it's become after all these years. The courtyard has only been here for about six years, maybe five years. It wasn't our first project that we took on when we moved in, but things have grown in really nicely. I get a lot of questions about the vine that's growing on the side of our house, and this is called a Virginia creeper. Um, this was actually here when we moved in. It's all over because it grows in the orchards around us. And so we dug one up and uh, moved it next to the side of the house and we've let it grow ever since. There is a little bit of a trellis system behind it that you can't see where they kind of train themselves to. And uh, as long as you keep it in check, I think it's really beautiful. It also helps to keep the house a little bit cooler because the courtyard gets sun all day and stays really nice and warm. I promise not to stop and tell you about every single rose because there are a lot of them, but they are in full bloom right now. And all of the roses that you'll see in the garden are um, some variety of David Austin, who is an English rose breeder. This is Benjamin Britten. They smell amazing. Some of them only bloom once throughout the year. And so it's a real, you have to just like soak it all up while you can. So right now we're in the greenhouse gardens. We're just sort of 
down a little bit from the courtyard where we just were. Behind me is our little pond that we put in a couple of years ago. We made a video on it if you'd like to check it out. But all of that landscaping is still under construction. I cannot stress enough to you how long it takes to build gardens. You have to be long suffering and know that you're doing it for the beauty, not for the finish line. You may notice throughout the video that we have two types of mulch going on. We're in the process right now of covering up our old pea gravel with wood chips. Now the reason for this is many fold. For one, we have access to wood chips so we can have tree trimmers drop off their tree uh, wood chips here, uh, which just means they're easier for us to get. The price of pea gravel went up a lot over the last couple of years and naturally things break down and things settle and you kind of need to keep um, keep things top dressed and so we were due for getting another dump truck load of pea gravel in and it was just really expensive but then when I started to explore the idea of using wood chips just in the pathways instead I really liked the idea because they do hold more water than pea gravel and they sort of take things down a bit. They give you almost like a woodland rustic cottage feel, which works perfect for our gardens because everything that you see here, we have to water with sprinklers and irrigate. We live in the high desert. It gets cool at night and really, really hot in the summertime. And so even the color of the wood chips seems to keep, keep the heat down a little bit. And it's been really helping to retain moisture. So all in all, a really good change but still a lot of work to transport it to all the pathways and put a nice thick layer on. Now this will naturally settle and break down, but luckily because we can get more, we can just continue to top dress it. This really helps with weeds in the pathways. Okay, so here we are now in the potager. The kitchen door now is in front of me. So if you're staring at our kitchen door, where we just were was to the left-hand side, and now I'm on the right-hand side. And we call this the potager because it's a mix of herbs and flowers and edibles. So this has evolved a lot of ways over the year. We've used the space behind me for a lot of different things. Right now, it's all full of edible herbs and flowers. We've planted a lot of perennials, 
and also annuals in there. So the idea of the potager really, in my mind, is just to be as beautiful as possible. So we have roses and hollyhocks and geranium and salvia and sunflowers. And then we've also put in some bigger pieces that have had seven years to grow in now. We have a dogwood, a peach tree. Um, this next to me is a gigantic currant bush. So things are really filling in and it's fun to see how it evolves. Now, lest this all looks a little precious, I cannot even express to you how many hours I spend out here weeding and toiling in the soil. It takes a lot of work. Luckily, as perennials especially grow in, they tend to kind of snuff out weeds before they get too started. But even still, there's a lot of maintenance that goes on here, and I'm not even that precious about it. I tend to not really deadhead roses or mess with things too much until I really need to. But even still, it's a labor of love. And uh, naturally, when you put all this effort in and you create this beauty, you want to share it with people. I hope you enjoyed our walk through the gardens together. This is my favorite time of day to be out here. Before the sun totally comes up, a lot of hummingbirds and bumblebees start to come out. It's just a really special place, and I'm glad I got to share it with you. We have a lot of work to do. There's pruning and weeding and watering to be done over the next couple days, especially up in the vegetable garden. But for now, I'm just gonna finish my coffee and enjoy the beauty.